Hello, this is Mr. Beck. This is part three in my uh, game tutorial. Uh, I call this Space Blaster. It's designed for my eighth grade Android uh, programming class. In um, the second part, we created uh, targets that uh, have been drawn to random points on the screen. I'm not running the emulator to show these things right now because I'm having a, a bit of an issue there. It's uh, conflicting with my sound device, so you'll have to uh, just run the program and try it for yourself. What we're going to do here is we're going to create collision detection between the ammunition and the target. We're firing ammunition and we have several targets on the screen. When the ammunition collides with the target, we're going to make the target disappear. So inside of the target class here, we're going to add a boolean value. and We're going to call it is showing and we're going to set it to true. Now in the event the ammunition collides with the target, we're going to set is showing to false, and then we're going to act on that as to whether or not we are drawing the target or not. So it'll be, the target will be showing at the beginning, and then if there's a collision, we'll set it to false, and then uh, we will not render it anymore in that case. So collision, when you're working with games, is pretty, especially two-dimensional, is pretty, pretty simple concept. We are talking about the distance formula. This is based on uh, the Pythagorean theorem, and uh, essentially distance equals um, x2 minus x1. We take the x coordinate of our two points, square them. Then we add, um, we subtract the y coordinates of these two points as long as they're in the same order. We square them. We take the square root of that, and that's going to give us distance in um, whatever unit we're using here. It's going to give us distance. All right. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to implement this formula, and you could you could write this out, you know, and definitely the way I do this is um, I, I try to simplify it so that the students in my class can kind of understand how I'm using this formula. Um, let's take a look inside of a panel. Now, down at the very bottom of the update method, okay, you can find the update method because I've got a reset ammo method here, and just right before that starts, I'm going to create a new loop and here it is um, I'm gonna loop through each target and uh, okay so the first time through the loop for every target right I'm gonna loop through each piece of ammunition and I'm gonna do a check for distance alright and so essentially um, the first time for the first target we're now gonna loop through each piece of ammunition okay and this gets called on every screen refresh it doesn't slow the program down too much it works just fine um, I created a float called x subs, and what I'm doing is I'm taking the target position x and I'm subtracting the position x of the ammunition to create a value called x subs. And I'm doing the same for y subs. I'm taking the value, the y position of the target and the y position of the ammunition, and I'm subtracting them, and I'm just calling this x subs and y subs. Now, essentially, what I've done here is I've just done what's in the parentheses, x2 minus x1, y2 minus y1. Okay? And then I'm going to square those two values. So I called it, I create a float called squared value. X subs times X subs plus Y subs times Y subs, right? And that is within our distance formula here. After subtracting these, we want to square the value. So I'm doing that. And the last step is to just take the square root of that, right? Okay. Um, so after I add the square value, of, after I square those values, add them together, right? We're going to take the square root. Now the square root, I'm doing math.square root squared value. We have to cast that to a float because math.square root does return an integer. And I'm going to return it to a float called distance. Now in this case, um, 10 point 0 is, is about right between uh, the center of the target and the center of the ammunition. Uh, anytime the two edges touch, there's about a value of 10. Uh, that, that's about right. Now, you, this is, you can adjust this, or we can make it very specific based on the actual size. We could actually measure our bitmaps, but I'm just going to use 10 as an arbitrary value. You can get close here, and you can use a just a number. And okay, so if the distance is less than 10, if, so what I've done is I've looped through 
one target and I've checked one piece of ammunition now, right? And if the distance between the target and the ammunition is less than 10, in other words, they're very close, touching, we're going to set the target, in this case, that's active, to false. Is showing value to false. And for the first target, it's going to do that for every piece of ammo. And then for the second target, it's going to do that for every piece of ammo. And by the time we're finished, we will have checked every target against every piece of ammunition. And if in any case, any piece of ammunition is um, less than 10 units from our target, the value of the target will be set to false. Now, so we've set target is showing to false. Now all we have to do is act on that. So I'm going to come up to my draw, on draw function up here. And uh, here's what we add, okay? As we loop through our targets and draw them, we just do a check if target i is showing. Well, this will return, this will only act if this value is true. If at any point we've set it to false, it won't draw. So when the ammunition collides with the target, the target will essentially disappear. And it is that simple. And this does work. Uh, it works very well in my experience. So here's our distance formula at the bottom of update. Implement that and then act on this false value. And when there is collision between ammunition and the target, you should see the target disappear. This is also a grade in my class. Um, when you fire on a target and the target is hit, the target should disappear. Uh, let me know when you have that and I will check you off. So thank you for watching part three. Uh, in the next part, we will... Um, continue with this game. I've got several different concepts, several different ways I'd like to go. I just uh, haven't decided uh, what we're going to do exactly next, but uh, in part four, we'll definitely uh, move further. So thank you for watching.